Hi guys, I'm Januja Benny. I'm here today with my very, very special guest, um, Guyanese superstar, uh, our, our, our newest champion, actually, Elton Darry. Elton, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you very much. And I know you're very busy. I also know you just got back from Saint Martin. Yes. How was that? It's great. It's great. Congrats. I, you know, we're all so, so very proud of you on your win on, on December 6th, yes. right, uh, against your opponent, Jose Rios, uh, who is Nicaraguan. Nicaragua. Uh, you know what? I'm having a, a hard time pronouncing that name, so you're going to have to help me do it. Nicaraguan champion, Jose Rios. Yes, and he's a tough, but he's a very, very, very tough very, opponent. Very tough customer, so that's how I <laughs> A tough customer? <laughs> yes, he's very tough. He's a champion in Nicaragua. And Apparently not tougher than you. No, I just have to uh, do show up that because and have better. Yes, and uh, you proved that. You proved that to him, you proved that to us, because now you're the holder of the uh, gold IBF Intercontinental Bantamweight title. Yes, and listen, you made us all very, very proud. Thank you. And uh, I had to do this interview. I had to meet you. I had to congratulate you in person. So again, on behalf of uh, you know all your fans, uh, all my Facebook um, friends, and uh, all my listeners on my radio show, uh, congratulations. We're really very proud of you. Well, thank you. I was hoping to make you guys proud when I did, so that's a compliment. You did just that. So, Elton, tell me, um, what does being an IBF Bantamweight champion uh, mean to you? It's a lot of meaning behind it, knowing where I came from and yes. where I'm at now. So, that's an accomplishment to be a champion. It's a hard sport to be in. It's pretty tough. You know, I put a lot of years in hard work. I can imagine. Let's talk about your opponent. Let's talk about Jose Rios. Tell me about him. Well, I've seen his fight. Okay. He's a pretty aggressive, strong, tough guy. Steady. I've never watched any of my opponents more than I watched him. I watched him two months, almost every night, before I go to sleep. Just studying, just studying. Yes. Every day when I get off the train, I watch the defenders before I go to the train. And I study him, I study his move, I study his power, his weakness, and fight night I just go and execute my game. Yeah. You just go for it. And, and you did a great job. And so again, we're all so proud of you. Uh, you know, people from everywhere are sharing uh, your, your post, um, you know, that's everywhere on Facebook, people from England, all over the world, basically. Um, I've been stalking you on Facebook, you know. I, po I reposted as well. Um, so including this recent title that you got December 6th in St. Martin, how many titles is that now for you? Well, before you say that, I think you're being, being very supportive and I'm stalking. I know you support. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. And I have four titles. I got yes. the WBC Collegian title, okay. the WBU America's title, and the IBF the continent. Four. That's, that's amazing. You know, how do you, how do you prepare? How do you prepare for one of these fights, though, physically and mentally? Well, you have to prepare yourself mentally before you and, and I'm assuming the mental preparation, that's all you. That's all you. Okay. You have to believe in yourself first. You gotta want to do this. You have to actually be prepared to fight. You gotta like really believe that you can do it. You gotta push yourself and train. You know, you, the more you train physically, the more you get prepared mentally. You have no doubt when you do everything correct in training. You better off that way eventually. So you're not thinking at any point, uh, I may lose this fight. You're thinking, this fight, this, this fight is mine. No, it's a lifestyle you have to live. You live the right lifestyle and you train the right way. Okay. You get yourself prepared. Yeah. Like that. Okay. And who are these who are these wonderful people that, that got you to this point? Your trainers. Tell me about your trainers, your, your sparring partner. Uh, where do you train? I train 
bases, boxing gyms, the world most famous boxing gyms. Oh, wow, okay. Which is over 130 world champions. Wow. Who is that? But I train with a great Nicaraguan boxer family, Martin Gonzalez. So he is a major plus for my upcoming fight. He knows my opponent trainer. They fought a few times years ago. Okay. That was a plus to me. Wow. Did they, did they approach you? Do you did you approach your trainer? Like how did that how did that relationship happen? Well, I was getting ready for a big fight. Five years ago, okay. the gym, and they approached me that they wanted to work with me to see okay. the potential, and yeah. I just get them okay and start working. And, you know, I never looked back since. It's been great. Five years, unbeaten. Five years, all wins, four titles. So, amazing, no amazing! Wow, that is that, that's so great. Now, oh. I also, I also have a. I'll have to change if they are both doing different things. Martin Gonzalez is on Saturday. And I have a fitness trainer and have a diet team. So. Do you train every day? I train, I train a fight. I train six days a week when I'm not scheduled to fight. I still train five days a week. So I'm pretty wow. busy to train. I can't imagine that. So you have no time for anything else. You just uh, you eat, breathe, and sleep. That's it. Right. I train, eat, sleep. That's my time. Yes. That's what I do. Like, okay, wait, I, let me ask you this I next question. <laughs> That's my next question, I actually. I wanted you to tell me, uh, you know, describe a typical day in the life of Elton Darry for me. Well, I get up, I eat, I go to train, take a nap, get up, go back to train. That's, that's all I do. Uh, how long is your nap? Because I'm thinking if I had to do... <laughs> be more than an hour. <laughs> so you can, you can do, these are power naps, basically. Yeah. Just have my voice Yes. You're making it sound a little bit easy though, because uh, you're a bantamweight champion, and that basically means you have a weight range that you have to maintain for these fights. And we were speaking earlier, and that weight range is 118 to 122. Yeah. How tough is that for you to maintain? I'm dropping maybe 15, 18 pounds. It can be tough for the first few weeks, but after training, it will be pretty easy after the years. I get in there, I drop the weight pretty quick. I have 24 hours to rehydrate, and I gain a lot of weight after that 24 hours. So I don't actually go on the ring and the fight weight, or at least 10 pounds every day. Okay, I see. See, that's something I didn't know. I thought that you have to be in the ring at uh, your weight in uh, weight, uh, you know, the, the weight that you um, uh, you had a few days before. I didn't know that you were allowed to gain whatever you can gain after that. Well, that would be pretty bad for me to go in the ring with that fight day. I'd yeah. probably be dead by now. But then they would have to follow the same rules. Yeah, so, so I, don't think, I don't think it's good for neither one of us. Yeah. Just to fight, lose the weight, to the punishment to make the weight. Exactly. Yeah, fight, so. yeah because you, you, you need your uh, nutrients, you need yeah. to be well hydrated, so yeah. you have to, you're going to have some water weight on you anyway. Um, so your, your diet and uh, nutrition uh, plan that you follow, do you, do you have to consult with a nutritionist or uh, this, is, this is all you? I'm this all me. I've been doing this for 12 years, so... so you know, you know, right you know now, what you have to eat, when to eat, when not to eat, yes. what to eat. how much to eat, how mm much -hmm. times I need to eat. How many times a day do you eat? I eat a lot, but small portions. Small portions throughout the day. So what, how, how many times a day do you, do you eat? It depends on what my schedule are, what the energy wise. Oh, I see, so that varies. Um, did you always want to be a boxer? When did this start? When I moved there. I, I grew up with my dad watching boxing and I watched wrestling. Okay. And he always told me to speak. And how old were you when you came here? I was 13. So when you came here, you started watching? Boxing. Yes. I found out wrestling. No. 
no offense to no Are you offense sure it's to, fake? My no, dad no my offense. dad still thinks it's real guys, so I can I, I can never tell my dad that it's fake, but yeah, no offense to that. That's like that's like that. 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 That's but it's not real. It seems like, yeah, they seem to be doing some pretty artistic stuff. Yeah, For me, it's like art. It's, <laughs> pretty, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. Yeah. Watch the train well, it's hard. Not, they have to be careful not to injure each other. Whereas yeah. with your sport, yeah. your goal is to injure your opponent. Okay. So it's completely different. Your goal is to knock them out. Knock them out, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you don't ever post, well, I've never really seen an entire uh, fight of yours. So, um, um, I would love to attend one of your matches at some point, uh, so I hope I get invited. I um, I knew that you were boxing in St. Martin, and um, I, I hear it's beautiful there, by the way. So next time you have a match, uh, I, I hope that I'm able to attend, because uh, I don't think I can miss it at this point. How, how do you balance uh, you know, being a boxer and uh, you know, with your family life? And I'm assuming you still have somewhat of a social life. How do you balance your history, your boxing career, your, your family life, and your social life? Well, um, schedule a fight. When you schedule a fight, I get pretty hectic and focus on what I have to do, what I need to do. Boxing life. But after fights, I have a lot of time with family and real social life. Yeah. Nothing crazy. I'm not that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Time. Well, that's good. So your friends and your family, they understand when you have to train, um, you know, to, they're supporting you, so they're not bothering you. Yeah. 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 And, uh, <laughs> um, what do you do for fun, though? Uh, you know, on your, on your little bit of downtime, how do you socialize? Anything can be fun for me. Any little simple thing, you know, you know I'm alive, I have my own strength, but that is fun. What an amazing personality. Yeah, you, you do seem like a very, very, very simple, simple guy. Yes, I was very intimidated. Uh, yeah, to come and meet you here today, I was like, wow, I, I don't know what I'm up against, but you're, you're just so simple, so content with that. You seem to be very content with this. Small things about it. Hey, and you excel at it. <laughs> you excel at it. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. What's next? Um, what's next for you? Uh, you know, fights, uh, business, goals. What's next for you? What can you expect uh, next from Elton? Uh, stuff on the table right now. I don't have to work out Nothing you can share with us? No. I can't share that right now, I'll have to do a management of the motion and maybe defend my title up there, fight for another title. But I really like to be back here in New York with my folks that have not seen me in a while. We would love that. So, we would absolutely love that. And uh, Elton, um, what advice can you give to uh, you know up and coming uh, young boxers? Because you've been doing it from uh, such a young age. Yeah, not just to boxers, to anybody. If you want to do something, you have to go all out. Forget what people say. You have to do this. You have to believe in you first. And have some faith. And just push yourself in training or whatever it is. Just push yourself and believe in yourself. Keep doing it. Get on it and just shine. Yeah, you definitely are. That, that's that's fantastic advice. And um, yeah, those jabs of yours, those punches. How fast are you? Because I think I could think I think I could take a punch from you. Anybody can take a shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'm not taking a shot at you. Believe me. <laughs> Have you ever timed yourself? How fast, is Elton? I never really timed myself. Uh, <laughs> I did some timing and power punches a while back, but I didn't want to look up on the results. So yes. I'm pretty good with the speed and power. And again, yes. This, obviously, obviously he's fast. Obviously, um, you know he's a master at his game. So congratulations, um, Elton. You know you, you deserve this. Obviously, we're all so proud of you again. But um, did you notice I have something um, on this table besides your your belt? 
I had to get these guys. I had to get these, and um, you know, my plan was to ask Elton to sign these for me. I, you know, I, can you sign these for me? It would mean the world, really. Well, I need a pen now, and I'm hoping someone would get us a pen so I can get these signed. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Look at that. <laughs> And we have a pen. Look, it matches your belt. Look at that. Well, guys, he likes gold, and I don't blame him. And this belt looks great on you, by the way, because we took some pictures earlier, and Elton was wearing his belt. So here you go, your pen, and oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, it's not here. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate appreciate this. My signed glove by uh, champion boxer Elton Derry, guys. Elton, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Congratulations. And keep up the great job. You're making us proud. Guys, hope you enjoyed the interview. Take care. Until next time. Bye-bye.